The Little Rock Nine, back in September of 1957, integrated Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. They had to do so with the National Guard to protect them because the governor of the state did not want them to integrate. The Little Rock Nine was a big impetus for civil rights and also for integration in the United States of America. Listen in on this exclusive interview. And uh, I noticed that you uh, graduated from high school in New York, according to the, some of the readings that I saw, and that basically you were expelled from Central High School for dropping... No. Uh, I was expelled from Central High School for telling a group of five girls to leave me alone white trash after they made my heels red and bleeding and threw things on me for about a week and then finally threw to hit me with a purse with six combination locks in it. And the rule was if a teacher didn't see it, it didn't happen. Nobody saw the purse, nobody saw the girls, but a teacher did see me say, leave me alone, white trash. And I, they wanted me to go anyway, so that was good enough. I didn't keep the purse because I wasn't very smart. So I had no evidence of, of the attack. And so consequently, they, they got rid of me and they wanted me to go, they did. And I guess before I even got out of the school, they had cards printed that said one down, eight to go. So. I was, the, I was the one they got rid of first and they were hoping to get rid of everybody else in time, in line. And so basically the closing of the high school was the determination by the governor at that time that um, you weren't going to graduate from Central High School or just to, a way to stop desegregation? That was, that was his ploy. Yeah. He, he, like other governors at that time, decided that closing the schools was probably the most effective way to keep black kids out of what they considered to be white only space. I was being harassed in PE. I was the only black kid and about 40 or 50 other white kids. And I caught hell. One day the coach brought us all together. We were standing around in a little semi-circle and he said, boys, I, I'm sick and tired of you sneaking up behind Roberts and doing these things to him. You're all a bunch of cowards. If you were not cowards, if you were truly men, you wouldn't sneak up on him like that. You'd challenge him face to face to the mat. Then he points to the wrestling mat. Now at that point, I'm thinking, Coach, this, this is not something I'm really agreeable to. And yet, they all lined up. All these kids lined up. And I thought to myself, Terry Roberts, you're about to die. Because they had murder in their eyes. So my choice at that point was to kill the first kid in line. So the first kid to come after me, I was going to kill him before they kill me. So it would be two people dead at least that day. Turns out he came at me and so I was so committed to this enterprise that I got him down in a headlock and he'd worn a set of military dog tags with a metal chain which I quickly seized as an instrument to restrict his air supply. And that kid was choking to death. He was turning blue and gasping and then the coach finally came to his senses and he came over and said, okay, look, that's enough, break it up. So he broke it up. But that was kind of how things went on occasion in that school. That sounds like a very uh, brutal environment. Well, it was, it was sort of, to me, it was like a Malcolm X position to take. See, Malcolm's position was, we will try and do this peacefully. peacefully. Ballots, if possible, but bullets, if necessary. So that was my bullets if necessary day. Do we call, when white people kill each other, do we call it white on white violence? I mean, yes, it's a tragedy because we don't want that to happen. That's, that's, if I were to try to say, what is the meaning of black on black violence? Violence. We don't want that to happen. We don't want to kill each other. Um, yet, we're not modeling peace. We're not modeling nonviolence. But are there any um, gun factories in Oakland? Uh, do you produce guns and distribute them? Um, they say that guns don't kill people, people kill people, but in places where there's regulation, in places where there's sanity in regulation, 
guns nor people are killing people.